there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco. And you know that weird stretchy neck thing you used to see in Super Nintendo games where enemies would like extend their head and their neck was made of balls? Yeah, that thing. Lots of games did this, uh, not just Super Ghouls and Ghosts, but also Super Metroid. Mother Brain did it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and try to recreate that. Okay, so let's get down to it. Start a new file. So, insert an active object. We're going to need three of these. Right click on it and clone it. We're going to need three rows. Perfect. So we got three objects here. Let's go ahead and name them. First one is going to be head. Second one is going to be neck. And the third one is going to be body. Alright, so I got some art for these. Let's go ahead and import it now. Alright, so we're going to need a couple necks. Let's go ahead and duplicate it. I don't know. It depends on how long you want it to be. I'm going to duplicate it um, eight times. So we have eight of these. Alright, so... They are the same object, so we don't need to modify more than one at a time. Uh, I am going to go ahead and add a alterable value to one of these. So click on one, click on the values, and let's add an ID value. Now the head doesn't need anything, that's fine. Uh, click on the body, add a value to that. We actually need two of them. First one is going to be called X underscore dist. That stands for X distance. That is going to be where we store the distance between the body and the head. The second one is going to be called y underscore distance, and that's going to call, uh, store the y distance between the body and the head. All right, so go ahead and click on the head, and we need to make sure that the hot spot is wherever we want the first neck piece to come from. So somewhere right about there should be good. And then click on the body and set the hot spot, and we're going to go ahead and put that here. That's going to be where the uh, initial neck part attached to the body is going to attach. So wherever you want the neck to attach, that's where you want to put this hot spot. Okay, go ahead and open the um, event editor, and let's do some stuff. Let's go ahead and start a start a frame event. So click start a frame. And what we're going to do is go to the neck, select alterable values, and we're going to spread a value. And we're going to spread I, uh, the value of ID. We're going to start at 1. We don't want to start at 0, so replace that value with a 1. Now, just for our purposes to test this initially, we're going to have the head follow the mouse. So set up an always event and have the head's X position and Y positions be set to X and Y mouse. That's under position, set X coordinate, X mouse, and then the Y coordinate is going to be Y mouse. Now what we need to do is find the distance between the head and the body, and we're going to store that in those two alterable values we made inside the body. So set up an always event, go to the body, alterable value set. We're going to set x distance to be the value of the position of the head, x coordinate, minus, actually sorry that's wrong. Go to the head, select position, x coordinate of action point, and subtract, then go to the body and select position, x coordinate of action point. Okay, now we need to do the same thing for the Y. We can just control C and control V to copy and paste this, select edit, and from the drop down select Y distance, and we're going to modify this. Everywhere you see an X, put a Y. What that's doing is grabbing the distance between the head and the body and storing it into these two alterable values. Now we actually need to have the head and neck, uh, or rather have the neck stretch out. We need to essentially disperse these evenly based on um, the distance and how many neck pieces there are. So let's make another always event. And we want to set the position of our neck, its x coordinate to be, go to the body and select position x coordinate of action point. And we need to add and put this in parentheses. We want to grab the value from the body of x distance, we want to divide that by the count of how many necks there are. So go to the neck and select count 
number of objects. Okay, close that off with a parentheses. And now we need to multiply this. Go back to the neck and select the value of ID. So what we've done is here, we are essentially finding out what increment we need to be dispersing these, uh, distributing these neck objects at. So that's gonna be the, to figure that out, that's gonna be the distance on the X divided by the number of neck objects. That's the increment that we need to distribute at. And then if we have the ID value, which is distributed one to however many neck pieces we have, that will put them at that, each particular neck piece at that point on the line. And then we need to anchor that to the action point of the body. That's what this does. Now all we gotta do is do the same thing for the Y. So go to, go to the neck, select position, set Y coordinate, and we're gonna set that to go to the body. We need the position Y coordinate of action point, and then add, put it in parentheses, and the same as before, which is gonna be the value under the body of Y distance divided by how many necks there are. So select number of objects, close the parentheses, and then multiply this by the value of ID, which we have distributed evenly, uh, of the neck piece. Now, there is gonna be a problem. Um, the the uh, Z hierarchy is gonna be a little off. Uh, objects are not gonna be in the right position, but we can fix that pretty easily. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so as you see, it works exactly as we want, except for, as I said, um, the order of objects is wrong. So that's actually really easy to fix. Let's do that this way. We'll set up another always event. And then first we're going to uh, bring the neck to the front. Go to order and say bring to front. And then we need another always event because if we put this on the same always event, it won't necessarily work. Make a different always event. Go to the head, order, bring to front. And there we go. We have a, I don't know how you describe this. We have an extendable neck made of balls, as you see in many SNES games. So if this is uh, all you wanted was to have it on the mouse, you're already done. But uh, we can go ahead and set up something extra, which is to give these this head a target position and then move it to the target position. And the neck will obviously stretch as needed. We could actually go ahead and anchor the neck a little closer to the body. The action point was a little far away. I didn't like the way that looked. Let's adjust it and see. There, that's better. So just imagine like, you know, your head's just kind of moving around like this, and then the the player gets close and he like strikes that womp, womp, you know. So it's, it's a pretty cool little effect. Um, do keep in mind though that this is only gonna work if you have one of these monsters uh, types per frame. Otherwise, it's gonna be it's gonna break down. You're gonna have to do something a little extra, either create an, an entirely different uh, enemy object for each instance of this, or you're gonna have to give them IDs, another ID, not just the single ID we already have, uh, to determine which monster these neck pieces are associated with. And that's a little more complex, so I'm not actually gonna put that in this tutorial, uh, but this should be enough to get you uh, started. Okay, so now we're gonna add a target X and Y position and let the head go to that. Um, we'll do that this way. We will set two values under the head. We're gonna call it TX and TY. That's for target X and target Y. Now over here in line two, where we are setting the head to be at the Y and X of the mouse, go ahead and delete that. Now we're gonna set up an always event and this is gonna be a tween. Um, I've explained this before, but I'll go ahead and do it again. This is essentially a way uh, in which you can move an object smoothly from one point to another. So we'll do that this way. So we're always going to do this. Go to the head, select position, set X coordinate. And that's gonna be, again, grab the X coordinate and we are subtracting, put it in parentheses, grab the value of target X, subtract the value of the X coordinate and multiply all that by 0 0.1. Now we just need to do the exact same thing um, for the Y. So go ahead and do that now. Set the position Y coordinate to be the Y coordinate minus 
Actually, I think it needs to be plus. I might have done this wrong. Uh, ty. That's target y. And then minus grab the position, the y coordinate, and multiply. Yeah, I messed this up. This minus here needs to be uh, a plus. We need to add it, not subtract it. So go ahead and edit the um, edit the x where we messed that up. All right, so let's do something simple to see if this actually worked. Let's set up an event where we can click, and that position will be the target x and y. Um, so go to the mouse and pointer object, select mouse, and we want to say user clicks with the left button and a single click. If that happens, go to the head set the value of target x to x mouse and set the value we can copy and paste this uh, set the value of ty to y mouse now let's see what happened okay so now the head moves smoothly to our target position looks pretty good too All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so now we're gonna set up a really simple behavior where the head just lashes out and then comes back. So we're gonna need some more values. So go ahead and put it on the body. Uh, we're gonna say attack cool down and then yeah, that's all we're gonna do. Okay, so let's set up a, a event where we're gonna be um, we're gonna be pulling the cool down towards zero. So if it's ever greater than zero, we're gonna pull it down. So we will find out if under the body, if the alterable value of, why is this box so big? Okay, whew, resize that. Um, the value of attack cooldown is greater than zero. If it's ever greater than zero, then we're going to simply subtract one from it. Okay, so if it's greater than zero, that means we are attacking. We want the head to be in the attack position. So, um, Let's go ahead and set the target X and target Y here where the attack cooldown is greater than zero. So go to the head, alterable value, set the TX to, um, we'll say whatever, we'll say the position uh, X coordinate of the action point of the body. And we want it to be off to the left. So we'll say like, I don't know, 100. So we are subtracting 100 pixels to the left from the body. That's going to be the target X and the target Y is going to be somewhere above. So we can copy and paste this, edit it, select TY from the dropdown. Um, we want the Y of the action point and again, uh, minus 100, which would be up. So this is going to send the head kind of uh, up left diagonal. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and find a way to trigger that so that the cooldown will be something different than zero because it's initially zero. And we'll do that on pressing the mouse or rather uh, the space bar. So go to the keyboard upon pressing a key, make that key space by pressing it. And then what we're gonna do is go to the body, setting the alterable value of attack cooldown to something like, I don't know, 100. And you want it to be, this value needs to be essentially the uh, big enough so that the head will stay where it's at for a while because however big this is the the um, target X and target Y will be set to that value here where it's stretched out for as long as this value is uh, greater than zero and then we're gonna cool it down to zero so obviously the bigger this value is the longer that's gonna take if we're gonna make it 100 let's find out if it worked okay so I press space and it it did put it put it down oh we did make a mistake though. Um, whenever uh, the cooldown is zero, we have to reset the head. So let's do that real quick. Alter value is attack cooldown zero. If attack cooldown is zero, um, we're gonna make target X and target Y equal to the hot spot of the body. So go to the head, set TX to the body's hot spot. That's under position. Uh, X coordinate of hotspot, or sorry, action point, not the hotspot, sorry. I get my terminology all mixed up. We're gonna copy and paste this just to edit it real quick. Turn TY to the Y of the action point. Let's try it again. 
Okay, so press space, boom, he lashes out and he goes back. Now that's kind of long for an attack, um, so let's make it something, instead of 100, something smaller like 30. And I also didn't like where the head went, it wasn't stretched out enough, so I'm going to modify this to be negative 300. There we go. So every time I press space, he doesn't attack. So um, you could find out, how, like, however you want to trigger this, it's up to you. It could be like whenever your player gets too close or randomly, if a random value that's constantly being generated hits one or something, then this behavior of this lash out could happen. And you could set the target X to target Y uh, to be the X and Y position of the player or whatever you want. But this is how it's done. We have, uh, this is, we've recreated that old classic Super Nintendo stretchy head thing that you see in like Metroid and uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. So, all right, uh, I know I haven't made a video in a while, so I'm sorry about that, guys. Been super busy, <clears throat> been super busy, and I've been also working mostly in Game Maker. Uh, I'm trying to learn that, so I'm going to probably have some more tutorials um, for that engine coming shortly. So, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys found this video educational. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I will try to get back to you. Not as good nowadays as I used to be. Like I said, I'm pretty busy trying to make games instead of just teaching them. So thanks for watching this video, guys. And I hope you have yourselves a fantastic day.